Praise the Lord, Chapleton. Oh, my goodness. I tell you what, I, you know what? Uh, I mean, I, I'm just, I'm just so elated. Uh, uh, are you all getting this? Are, are you, are you uh, 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 getting what I'm trying to, by the Holy Spirit, the help of the Holy Spirit to communicate with you? You know, if you would like to hear it in, a, in its greater, uh, maybe in its entirety, I, I talk about it it's so much more. You can connect with us on Facebook. Just look for my name, Rodolfo Peterkin. On Facebook, it acts to be my friend, and you can connect with me, and uh, you can go back and listen to some of these things that I have been talking about. Okay, <clears throat> but I'm going to continue tonight to this morning, I should say, in this devotion, talking about are your son a slave or an orphan, with the subtitle "Your condition changes your position." <clears throat> Scripture says in verse 5 of Ephesians 1, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Uh, and the, the mirror Bible says, it says, he, I'm sorry, he is the architect of our design. His heart dream realized our coming of age in Christ. It says, adoption here is not what is, it means in our Western society. It, it is a coming of age like the typical Jewish bar mitzvah. You see, he comes to seal our sonship, I'm sorry, and the seal of our sonship, the spirit of his son, echoes of our father in our hearts. You see, this is God's plan. And my, my thing is, if this is God's plan for me, then, then why would I walk in this? Why would I believe it? Why would I say what I am and act like this is who I am? Why, why not? Why not? Are, are you following me? This is the reason why Paul, Paul took this gospel of grace to the entire world. This is for all of us. It doesn't begin when I get to heaven. It starts now here on the earth. Now look at this here. Verse 6. It says, to the, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved. Uh, again, the, the mirror Bible says, his grace plan is to be celebrated. Sure, it's to be celebrated. Uh, show me who else has provided any of that for us. Huh? You can't go to Hare Krishna. You can't go to Moon. You can't go to none of these guys. You see? None of these guys. None of these religion provides this for us. None of them. None of them makes this available to us. None of them changes us. And all we have to do is believe. None of them do that. Only God. Are, are, you, are you following me? Are, are you following me, folks? Look at what he said. He says, uh, verse 6, he said, uh, His grace plan is to be celebrated. He greatly endeared us. Did you see that? He greatly endeared us. What, what, what are so many believers hungry for? Love. Love. We have, we have young men and young ladies that get abused by others because they're in search for love and they're looking for it in all the wrong places. Are you listening to me? I understand that we are creatures made of love, uh, made by God, and we're made to love, to give love and to receive love. We're, we're made that way. You see, but sin has, has, has shown us a way to get this thing that God does not approve of. The, 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 the phileo, the, the, the eros love, all these other loves uh, it, done in the proper way where God blessings is. Yes, it can bless us, but listen to me. It is the love of God that bypasses the physical 
and goes to the core of the heart is the love of God. Listen to this. It said the gospel is not about telling people how lost they are, but reminding them of how loved they are. Are, are, you, are you following me? That's what the gospel is. This is what the gospel. God has greatly endeared us. Here he says, he said, wherein he hath made us what? Accepted in the beloved. Do you see this? I talk to people all the time. You probably do. They have a poor self-image of themselves. Poor self-worth. Feels like they're not much. And, and all this is done by the adversary. But when we come to God, beloved, you and I must understand, God accepts us in the beloved. Are you, are you listening to me? God endears us. He loves us. He loves on us. Now, I am not saying that we won't have challenges. Remember, we got to grow in the things of God. We've got to learn how to function, how to get what we need from the kingdom. We've got to learn these things. So you may be listening to me and you say, well, man, uh, you know what? I ain't there. I, I don't feel that way. I don't, I don't, th that's fine. But you see, I'm telling you this so that you and I know this is what we need to renew ourselves with. You need to renew your mind with. You need to understand your condition now before God. Your position now before God. You see, if God didn't love us, right? If God didn't care about us, then why he come? Why did he come? Why didn't he stay where he was? We were going to hell without his help. Are you following me? He came to rescue us. He came to change our lives. I didn't get where I am today overnight. I grew, I learned. People taught me, I listened. I put things here, I put things there. I made mistakes, but I kept on. And I'm continuing today, and I'll continue tomorrow. You and I have abounded, he said. You see, we have been accepted where? In the beloved. And then he goes on he's, and he says this. He says, in whom, listen to this, in whom you and I have redemption. Redemption is the, the act of ransoming. Listen to me. Jesus, in dying for, on, on the cross for you, it's not just for you to just say I'm a Christian and, and just, you know, However, we can make it. We can. No, 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 no. He literally bought you back. the The word redemption is the the word re, which indicates that there was a time where God owned you, where you were His. You were in His house, and He lost you. Just like if you went to a pawn shop, and you need some money, and you take something from your home, and you pawn it. And when you come back to redeem it, then you have to give them the amount they gave you plus an additional fee. And then you can what? You can redeem it. Well, that's what the blood did. The blood. The blood redeemed you. The blood of Christ bought, bought you back to himself. 
You see, God, God brought you back to him. And in bringing you back to him, you became his child. See, in whom we have redemption through his blood. Uh, uh, the mirror Bible says, since we are fully represented in him, his blood is the ransom that secures our redemption. You know what that means? Do, do you understand what that's saying? His blood is the ransom that, in other words, the blood of Christ is the payment. And that payment secures your redemption. This is who we have become. Does that make sense to you? His forgiving our sins, watch this now. His forgiving our sins measures the wealth of his grace. Wow. Wow. <laughs> oh my God. Moses couldn't die for us. Abraham couldn't die for us. None of the patriarchs of old could die for us. Sin was so costly, my friend, that it took God himself to become a man to die for us. That in itself is the picture of the wealth of the grace of God. I mean, you think about it. If God would do that for us, what else won't he do? What is there that he won't do? Isn't this awesome? It says, we're in verse 8, he hath abounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence. This grace shown towards us communicates a wisdom and discernment of our worth that completely surpasses any definition. You see what I'm talking about? <laughs> you see? You, you know, if, if, a, if a person want to know uh, their self-worth, uh, they can look at what the gospel says. You want to lift your self-esteem? Look what the scripture says you have become. Your self-worth, all of these things. This is designed to, to, to reshape, to change our condition and thereby changing our position. It is designed to help the children of God in neutralizing the very work of the old man so that we can walk in what God has for us here on the earth. Friend, I'm telling you tonight, I'm telling you, Are you a son, a slave, or an orphan? And I'm dealing with the aspect of sonship. Your condition changes your position. I'm so glad that you have tuned in this morning with this devotion. And I hope and I trust in the Lord Jesus Christ that the word that we have been sharing has been a blessing to you. Amen. We will continue this on next week. Remember, the power of the seed is not in its size, it's in its contents. God bless you. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.